Hello everyone and welcome to the first game we'll be covering from round 4 of this year's FIDE World Cup. It is Vincent Keimer versus Magnus Carlsen. It's a very important game for both of them, obviously, as uh, they want to qualify for the candidates. Maybe Magnus not so much, but Vincent definitely wouldn't mind. And also, Vincent has never defeated Magnus Carlsen in classical chess. Uh, so let's dive straight into it and see uh, what happened here. It's quite a brutal game. You guys will have two awesome pause the video moments. Uh, to get here, uh, Vincent, like Magnus, was seeded directly into round 2 as he he was in the top 50 participants of the FIDE World Cup. Uh, he defeated Daniel Darda and Amin Tabatabai at the reach round 4, and Magnus, of course, defeated Levan Pansalaya and Ari Antari in rounds 2 or 3, also was seeded directly into round 2. So that being said, let's check it out. Uh, quite a lot to enjoy here. Uh, I'm going to try to spoil as um, uh, little as possible uh, during the uh, analysis. We have pawn to d4 by Vincent, uh, and Magnus goes for knight to f6. We have c4, e6, knight to c3, and now pawn to d5, not going for anything crazy like a Nimzo Indian. Uh, C captures, E captures, and now bishop to g5. Although it's not uh, unreasonable to expect Magnus to go for a Nimzo Indian uh, in classical against a player like Vincent. So, okay, bishop to b4. Uh, we have pawn to e3, and now pawn to h6, challenging the bishop on g5. Bishop to f4, and now bishop to f5. We have bishop to d3, countering the bishop on, uh, on f5. And here we have bishop captures and queen captures and here Vincent knows this game incredibly well because he already lost this position uh, he had uh, last year and he lost it uh, in the Beal Chess Festival against none other than Gukesh uh, but um, uh, here they continue uh, a different path in that game uh, castles was played but here we have pawn to c6 so it is now uh, a different game uh, but uh, uh, yeah and it is now as of move uh, 9 that we have a completely new game so Magnus chooses a different route it's hard to say if Magnus knows this game that was played uh, as Gukish did win it so obviously he played very well so maybe Magnus knows even better so okay pawn to c6 we have knight to e2 now getting ready to castle and knight to h5 Magnus now goes after the bishop on f4 bishop to e5 puts pressure on the g7 pawn and knight to d7 goes after uh, Vincent's bishop on e5 Pawn to h3, and now just knight h back to f6. Uh, we have bishop back to e, uh, h2. You could capture it, but of course Magnus has uh, different plans, and he knows what he's doing. We have castles, and now, uh, sorry, castles, uh, and now pawn to a3, chasing away the bishop, and bishop to a5. We have uh, castles finally, and rook to e8. We have rook a to c1, and Magnus goes queen to e7. Develops the queen, connects the rooks, and now pawn to b4, of course. Uh, bishop back to d8 and now knight to g3. So a bit of a weird square for the bishop, but the bishop now uh, returns to c7. Uh, we have knight to f5 and now bishop captures on h2. We have king captures and queen to e6 now. Putting pressure on the knight here. So the knight goes back, knight to g3 and queen to d6 now pinning the, uh, the knight here. King back to g1 and now pawn to a5 going after Vincent's b pawn and this is where things start to get very very interesting. Vincent plays queen back to b1, he wants to put pressure along the b file and now knight to b6. Uh, we have a b captures on a5, Vincent did consider some moves here because you, you don't have to capture, it's not a forced capture, you could also consider something like e4 here uh, but it is, um, you know, if, if it brings you advantage then it's great, if it doesn't then maybe hold off uh, with it. So, uh, instead b captures on a5 and now knight to c4 magnus now wants to recapture with the rook uh, we have queen to b4 vincent offers a queen trade so of course you're not going to trade because then a captures on b4 guards the a5 pawn so rook captures on a5 and uh, here uh, comes the fireworks knight captures on d5 so what can you do here uh, it's a very uh, a very cool move because you can recapture uh, three different ways you could play c captures queen captures and the rook captures and only one uh, one one recapture is basically good because if you play c captures on d5 then rook captures on c4 removes the defender of the rook on a5 you're gonna have to trade queens queen captures on b4 and now rook captures on b4 and okay the game continues equal material uh, and, and not equal material white uh, will be up upon 
so maybe try to avoid this after knight captures on d5 queen captures on d5 is also possible but then again rook captures on c4 rook captures on a3 a nice vision zug uh queen captures on a3 queen captures on c4 and now okay rook to b1 will put pressure on the b pawn uh you're gonna play pawn to b5 and okay equal material uh you know a fine game for both and not uh, maybe even a bad one you do have a passed b pawn however magnus decides to go for the absolute best line and that is knight captures on d4 uh, on d5 because you also uh, w will get uh, uh, a lot uh, a lot uh, w without actually uh, giving much so queen captures on c4 and now rook captures on a3 now uh, it's a fine position vincent uh, doing incredibly well however he is spending a lot more time than magnus he he's down to 15 minutes on the clock and magnus has almost an hour some 56 minutes on the clock so okay queen to c5 vincent boldly offers a queen trade he challenges the the, the final boss of the end game to a duel uh, and magnus accepts queen captures on c5 and rook captures on c5 we have rook um uh, 8 to e8 now doubling up on the a file now you can put the rook on the second rank you can put the rook on b2 to help you advance the the b pawn if you can defend your c6 pawn somehow also you can play rook to a1 you can uh, trade trade of rook so magnus's position is very good here uh knight to f5 and here we have pawn to h5 magnus of course wants to kick away the knight but he doesn't want to allow knight captures on h6 so he first plays this and this also fights against vincent's next move which is pawn to g4 uh, vincent still plays it and he he plays it with 10 minutes on the uh, on the clock and this is only move 31 you have to reach move 40 in order to reach uh, uh, time control and be awarded additional time so h captures on g4 we have h captures and now rook to a2 nicely putting the rook on the on the second rank uh, also you have to be a little bit careful if the knight moves and let's say you put a king on the second rank you have to worry about something like knight captures on e3 if the f pawn will be pinned so it's a very nasty square for the rook uh, and here uh, we have a uh, rook to b1 putting pressure on the b7 pawn here rook to a1 magnus trades off uh, a pair of rooks we have rook captures and rook captures on a1 with check we have king to g2 and now king to f8 magnus also starts activating his king and here vincent plays pawn to g5 and it's such a such a tricky position uh but uh, again the the problem is uh, uh vincent is very very low on time four more moves need to be made to reach time control vincent has four minutes on the clock magnus has 50 minutes on the clock and here magnus did something that you should never do in an end game he started playing against not the position itself but against his opponent's time and magnus blunders a move he plays knight to c7 and it's a very uh normal looking move you want to play knight to e6 and of course attack the rook and the pawn uh, on uh, on g5 but this uh is actually already completely lost if vincent can punish this knight to c7 move and play a perfect game for the rest of the game against magnus carlsen so feel free to pause the video here and try to find this idea while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being a true master of the end game. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Knight to D6. That's the move that uh, uh, that stops Magnus's idea because now his plan of Knight to E6 will be punished uh, uh, severely. If he goes Knight to E6, look at this rook to f5 now still defends the pawn but also puts pressure on the f7 pawn and now knight d8 defending the pawn is met with g6 of course you cannot allow the capture you're going to play f6 and now look at this rook to h5 now threatening rook to h8 check followed by knight to f5 with check so you're going to move the knight knight e6 rook to h8 with check king to e7 and now knight to f5 with check king to d7 and now the final uh strike knight captures on g7 knight captures rook h7 will uh, t take the knight out and you will uh have this position being up upon but also having a, a past the g pawn already on g6 let's say king to e6 rook captures here you're threatening the pawn but there, there's there's also very little black can do against the past g pawn you're just going to move the rook and advance your pawn to victory uh black can uh, put some resistance here but uh, all in all it is very much winning for vince so Magnus has to find a different way after knight to d6 Magnus plays g6 but now uh, there's a different um, uh, approach here uh, also okay you could try something like rook to b1 if you're wondering what happens here just rook f5 I mean that's uh, all there is to it the, the, the pawn is being um, threatened there's no, no way to defend it if you move at knight captures on f7 if you attack the rook pawn to e4 it uh, defends the rook and again you're going to be up a pawn so in 
instead after knight e6, like I said, pawn to g6 by Magnus, and now comes uh, knight captures on b7, you cannot defend everything, so he had to give up a pawn, rook b1, and now knight to d8. Uh, going after the c6 pawn as well, rook to b5, and now rook captures on b5. This is much better than just going after the pawn here, and then after pawn captures knight a6, and you cannot defend the, the c5 pawn. So it's better to keep the pawns together, rook captures on b5, pawn captures, and now knight to c6. And now... Uh, Magnus has to figure out how to how to try and hold this because it's not going to be easy. Not only is Magnus down a pawn, but Vincent will have the full center. Once those pawns come to d4, e4, and f4, he will have control over all of the all, all, all over all of the board uh, basically. So king to e8, we have knight to b4, king to e7, and now pawn to f4. We have king to d6, and now king to f3. We have knight to e6 now. Uh, trying to create some weaknesses here. Of course, if the pawn is pushed, then d4 and f4 will be a little bit weak. Uh, but Vincent not in a rush to do this. King to e2 is played, and now knight to g7. Again, uh, Vincent is, is burning quite a lot of time. He's again down to 15 minutes on the clock, even though additional time has been uh, awarded to him. So he has to be very, very careful. Uh, how do you continue here? Well, Vincent played pawn to e4, and it is the absolute best move. Uh, it's uh, hard to say what Magnus uh, had in mind here. Uh, well, it's not very hard because we know what he played, but basically if you play something like knight to e6, attack the pawns, then just king e3, and they are defended. So Magnus went knight to h5 instead, now king f3, and now Magnus just goes back, knight to g7. This is basically saying, okay, I know I'm lost, uh, I can just wait until you give me something to, you know, sink my teeth in. So knight to d3 by Vincent, and now knight back to h5, and here king to e3. Uh, if you play something like pawn to e5 with check, then king d5, and it's a draw. Your pawn is, d4 pawn is hanging, king to e3, king c4, and now you're going to start advancing the pawn. This is enough for Magnus to draw the game. So after this, king to e3 was played, uh, and also uh, notice that d5 here will be met with this very, very tricky, and this was kind of the idea behind Magnus's knight to h5, pawn to f6, or pawn to f5 for that matter. Point is that after g6 and knight captures, Magnus uh, would probably sacrifice a piece here, king captures, pawn captures, and now king to e6, and this is now a draw. Knight to b4, king captures, and now the knight is stuck here guarding against the passed b pawn, and the king is stuck here guarding the uh, f pawn, and there are even some variations where white can actually lose this position. So that's why after knight h5, we have king to e3 by Vincent, very low on time, but playing uh, uh, engine precise moves. We have knight to g3, and now, only now, pawn to d5. We have king to c7 by Magnus, and king to d4. We have king to b6, uh, 8 minutes. 8 minutes is now what Vincent has to believe in himself, and uh, if, it, uh, like everyone said, if this was anyone else uh, sitting across Vincent, he would just blast through the position. But as uh, it is, uh, well, arguably one of the greatest, if not the greatest player ever to play the end game, uh, you know, and chess in general, sitting uh, uh, across him, uh, you know, you have to be a little bit careful. And he goes knight to e5. King e5 is also winning, but it's a, it's a very tricky line. I will just show it because it's super fun. Knight to e2, now you have to be again very careful, uh, df4 pawn could hang, and also knight to d4 check in some lines could be relevant. King f6, now pawn to b4, d6, now you're going to block the pawn, and now king to e7. Of course, now you have to help out with the knight, knight to d4, d7, knight to e6, you stop promotion, but now knight captures some b4, and with the elimination of the pass b pawn, black's chances of a draw are very much gone. King c5, you're going to play e5, you can even sacrifice the knight here, captures, captures, and now you're gonna win all of the pawns. Knight is here, uh, king captures here, and you have four pawns against the knight, of course, completely winning for Vincent. But he doesn't wanna uh, risk anything. He's down uh, to, to a, a few minutes, and um, well, you just don't wanna overthink it. Knight to e5 also looks very much winning. And now Magnus plays pawn to b4. Very often a, uh, a, a winning uh, move in, in any position. Knight captures on f7 and now pawn to b3. And now Magnus did, uh, well, everything and all he could do. There is um, uh, only one move for Vincent here that wins the game. And it's not an easy one to spot. Feel free to pause the video and try to beat Magnus Carlsen in an endgame while I give you a couple of seconds. 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being uh, once again a true master of the endgame. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is knight to e5. This is the only move that wins. And uh, yes, it's very hard to uh, you know fight the urge to just push pawns. But uh, to, to give you an example, if pawn to d6, king to c6, and now if king to c3, you have to stop the pass pawn. Knight captures an e4 check. King captures on b3, knight captures on d6, and that's it. Yes, white is up a pawn, but it is not enough to win the game. And another Another thing, if you don't go knight to e5, you might uh, try knight to d6, but now look at this, knight e2 check, goes after the f4 pawn, you defend it, now king c5 goes after the knight, and you cannot trade knights uh, because it's a draw, and if knight b7 check, you just follow the knight, knight to d6 uh, check, king to c5, just follow the white knight, and there is no, no win here. But Vincent finds it, he plays knight to e5 with some 2 minutes on the clock, and he really slammed that knight into the center of the board, and uh, once Magnus saw this, he, he knew that it was over, knight to e2 check check was played king to e3 and now king to b5 even uh, if uh, pawn to b2 of course knight to c4 check uh, picks up the pawn nicely with a fork it's also something that doesn't really work in magnus's favor he played king to b5 now he is threatening b2 if vincent allows it, then he lo he loses the game but he finds a very nice knight to d3 and with the knight on d3 guarding the b2 square there is no crossing the b2 square knight to c3 was played we have pawn to d6 now comes king to c6 and pawn to e5 and here magnus looked at this move for a few seconds he made a very sad face not a very sad face but like maybe a yeah, you know, I can't even make that face. It's like it's it's the face of true sadness. You can't just make that up if if you're not like a great actor or something, which I'm not. Uh, and yeah, it was in this position on move 58 that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Vincent takes Magnus down in classical for the first time in his life, and now he's very very close to actually uh, knocking Magnus out of the FIDE World Cup, which would be uh, brilliant for for Vincent, but it would be a horror for Magnus as he uh, really wants to win this. It is basically the only chess tournament he never won like i said aside from the fisher random which kind of isn't actual chess but you know uh you know if, if you call that chess then uh, i guess there are two tournaments uh and yeah uh the, there's no time to celebrate vincent has to prepare very very uh much f for next game he will have black against magnus carlsen and uh, magnus will play this very very slowly he will he will uh, you know crunch all the numbers he will he will squeeze every position and he will try to equalize and force uh, tiebreak against Vincent but of course if Vincent can get a draw then it's going to be a very very sad day uh, for Magnus but Vincent with a chance to go go further go uh, to, the, to the final 16 uh, and maybe win a chance uh, at uh, qualifying for the FIDE candidates tournament and then maybe even a chance to become a world champion so th th there's really a lot at, at stake here for Vincent. Uh, here you resign because there is really no hope uh, if you try let's say knight to d1 check king to d2 and even if you try this tricky b2 move uh, or to, to try and win the knight just king to c2 you can just ignore this doesn't really matter king c2 and that's it uh, you are without a move you can promote to a queen uh, and that's it knight to e3 but th there is no move you cannot touch the base of the pawn chain the knight defends it that means you can't touch any of the pawns you can't push this pawn uh, you're just gonna you know make moves uh, f for no good reason and of course Magnus will not do this to his opponent as he's a true gentleman uh, so yeah that's the game really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it brilliant stuff by Vincent hope you guys solved not one but both post the video moments and uh, what can I say they are both involved knights knights are tricky bastards if you if you can master the knight then you've mastered chess truly uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Erin um, uh, is the best wife. Uh, no, Laura is the best wife. Uh, Corinne is the best wife in the entire universe, period. Jacqueline, best wife in all parallel universes, has entered the chat. And actually, Hadel is the best um, uh, wife, obviously, for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this magnificent event uh, until it finishes. So thank you. All. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.